racism, disarmament, uh, all that kind of stuff. But we didn't find peace because we were searching in the wrong place. We were trying to find peace through politics. And politics, politics divides people. Christ unites people. So anybody now, you know if you go online and there's a political issue, people you've never met are wanting to kill you yes. for having a different opinion than them. That's right. Now what happened to me is about five years ago, I went through a huge trauma, I fell down into depression. And I throw around, I, I don't want to throw around the term depression lightly, because I know it's used a lot these days, but my friends, I could sit here and list the symptoms I went through all day because it was like, not just my mood crash, I was suffering from anxiety, I would be physically shaking, I became hooked on alcohol despite the fact that I'd never really been a drinker before. And I started to drink up to a litre of whiskey a day to the point that I had to accept that I had a habit, that my body was craving it, and that I needed help from that. Uh, I let my house fall into such a state of disrepair that uh, towards the end of my depression, the, uh, the housing association called in the uh, social workers to help me get my house cleaned up because it had become so unhygienic. I was living life like some kind of caveman outlaw. Those four years, those four years that I was broken, I was a broken person, emotionally, physically, spiritually, you name it. All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put me together again. Now my friends, we all love a story, and this story is going through a bleak point at the moment, but believe me, it has the happiest ending ever. Because most stories, you have a happy ending for now, this has a happy ending in eternity. Hallelujah! Because I was always interested in truth, but I could never find it. And when I came to Christ, I was given what I would call ultimate truth. Thank Not just Jesus. some minor truth about, uh, you know, horses or cars or politics or something like that. I was given the truth, this beautiful treasure, the truth about why we were created, who created us, the nature of who created us, and how we could come to the person who created us. Hallelujah. Because believe it or not, my friends, the creator of the universe wants a relationship with you. A proper relationship, right. like you would have with a human being. God does not want to be this uh, person you see in all these old paintings, some old white guy on a cloud with a beard pointing sternly down. That's not who God is. God is spirit. God is the spirit, the cause of causes, the alpha and omega, because no matter what you believe about science, the universe has a beginning. It has a starting point. That's so right. where did matter come from? This is where science fails, because science, you can't argue that something can come out of nothing. Mm. The big question with the universe is, why something, not nothing? And the only logical answer to that is God. Woo! We have to have a person. Yes. We have to have a will. God to, bless in you. order for the universe to come into being, there has to be a will to bring it into being. Mm. So there has to be a person. That's right. So back to my story. I was so broken, and I don't want to spend all day telling you how broken I was. I was wandering around, I was drunken, I was wearing filthy clothes. There was a period for nine months I don't think I had a shower. I'm, I'm, if you met me just before I came to Christ, I think I looked like Fred Flintstone. <laughs> I was wandering around this filthy person who, who didn't want to live. I genuinely had had enough of life and the only thing that stopped me killing myself is I didn't want to upset anybody. I knew it would upset my mother and there was times I even thought one day she'll be dead and then I'll be able to take my life and not feel guilty or not feel I'd upset anybody. But I had had enough of life and what happened? I think of all these people, when we do this ministry, when we go out on the streets and spread the gospel, 
all the people who walk past, who have anger and rage, who have disappointment, who have hurt. And the Bible says, Jesus himself says, come to me. Come to me, all you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And once again, I turn to that word peace, for that is the rest. That's but right. the important part is that you come to Jesus. Jesus is waiting. Your first step towards Christ may be awkward, like the first steps of a baby goes, eh, you know, but Christ wants to know you and when you walk towards Christ, he will walk towards you. Woo! I am a living testament of that. My brother here is a living testament of Hallelujah. that. Hallelujah! Every born again Christian you hear is a living testament of that. The fact that I am on the streets speaking into this microphone. Yes. Wow, I'm not the kind of person that, that, that would do this. That's if somebody right. had said to me a year and a half ago, you'd be a Christian, I'd say, no way. Even when I first came to Christ, I didn't think I'd be an evangelist or out here doing this. I, I, I've not been on the microphone before. I'm not a rap artist, believe it or not. I'm not a stand-up comedian. Come on now. Despite having a Scottish accent, I'm honestly not. But now, you see, my friends, when I talk of this peace that the Lord has given us. Amen, brother. When I talk of this peace, if you have this peace, if you had this piece, you'd be trying to grab this microphone off me and do it yourself. So what happened? I was walking the streets, a broken person. I was drunk, I was unclean, I was wearing filthy rags. I was crying, I was despairing. I wanted to go and throw myself in the river trend. I'd had enough of life. And I was walking the streets in High St. Green and I heard this beautiful song and there was four Christians singing Bread of Heaven. Hallelujah. Maybe you know that song from the rugby, but it's a good old gospel song. And I started to feel something. I started to feel there is hope. Woo! There is hope. I yes! don't quite know what this hope is, but there is a reason to keep on living. And the Christians, the Christians Jesus. came up to me and I cried in their arms. I'm not afraid. I cried like a baby that day. I said, I am so broken. I need a savior. I don't know what to do. And they said to me, has anybody ever prayed for you? And that had never happened. I didn't even know what prayer was. I thought prayer was something uh, that we did in primary school where we recited words out of a book in order to uh, get your school dinner. You had to say all this, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, really quick, and then you get your dinner. Yeah. I didn't realize that prayer could be spontaneous. That's right. Prayer could be like a conversation Woo! between me and you. And God does answer. Yes. And so they introduced me to prayer. and. I did not believe at first, but I knew if I kept praying, something would happen. And this was the greatest medicine I could be given. And I started to pray every day. I found a place to pray, a lovely little churchyard up near the Arboretum. And I would go there and I would pray every day. And I didn't know at first whether this was like a placebo, but all I knew is this was working. This depression was lifting off me. After four years of chronic depression, I should not have come out of that that quick. That is a medical miracle as much as any act of physical healing. healing. And me and my brother here, we've seen physical healing on the streets of Nottingham. The state of depression I was in, the chronic depression I was in, 